Don't become a microgreens grower before hearing these five top tips for beginner microgreens growers first. The microgreens industry has been growing rapidly for years and I've been watching as thousands of beginner microgreens growers hit the ground running. Now some of them do really well, but others fail miserably and fall flat on their face. There are some big differences between these two types of outcomes and you're probably wondering what these key differences are. Obviously, you would wanna know this stuff as a beginner microgreens grower. So in this video, I'm gonna share my five top tips for beginner microgreens growers. And actually, two of these top tips are something I came up with myself that really allowed me to thrive as a beginner microgreens grower. Starting a microgreens farm and creating a microgreens business can be tricky, especially in the beginning. So it's great to have some proper advice when you're first getting started. So with that being said, for the best microgreens content on the internet, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel right here and ring that bell. That way you get notified when I come out with new videos on Tuesdays. I've been running my microgreens business for seven years now. I've had four farms total and I even just recently started over from scratch. So I've learned what works and I've learned what doesn't work specifically from personal experience. But I've also been watching and helping other microgreens growers get started for the past four years now. And this is where I've really been able to gain even more well-rounded knowledge at scale. It's these top tips that I'm about to share with you, which often determine whether microgreens growers will crush it right off the bat or end up struggling, wasting tons of time and money, not knowing why their microgreens business is failing. So let's get on into it. Top tip number one, start from home. You're already living and paying for that space, so you might as well make better use out of it and gain even more value out of what you're already using and already paying for. Use your home space to grow some food and see if you even like growing in the first place before you even think about starting to turn it into a business, let alone spending a ton of money on large overhead costs like rent. And not only is it more money efficient to run this business from home, especially in the beginning, it's also less risky, of course, but you will also have no commute. So this is gonna save you time and money in that way as well. It's really just a no brainer. If you rented a grow space from the beginning, you'd be stuck with that overhead having to earn all of that revenue just to cover that overhead expense of rent before you could even think about turning profits. A big rent payment really raises your bottom line and adds a ton of stress, which is really the last thing you want in the very beginning when you're starting your microgreens business. If you try to grow too fast, you can run out of money, killing your microgreens business, and then you'll be stuck trying to sell your equipment, thinking that this whole microgreens thing was really just a scam. Meanwhile, it's not. I've been running my microgreens business for seven years straight now, and why do you think I keep it running? And by the way, the most recent farm that I have built is actually here in my house, in my basement. It's not in some other space, like a warehouse or a retail location. I started in my parents' basement back in the day and operated from two other urban farm locations before now returning back to the basement. It's literally my favorite farm so far, and there's tons of benefits from running your microgreens farm from a basement, which I'll cover in a future video. All right, tip number two, have a delay delivery service right away. This is where you're going to drive the orders directly to your customers with a delivery route. You're going to be able to hit all your different customers all on one route. Your grocery stores, your restaurants, your home deliveries, they're all gonna get delivered to on the same day each week as you drive from place to place. This is going to result in a convenient and efficient way to fulfill all of your customers' orders while providing them a high quality service as well. So now just instead of providing value to your customers in terms of your product, AKA your microgreens, you're now gonna be able to provide value with your delivery service, therefore increasing the overall value of your offer. Your delivery service could incorporate other efficiencies for you and your customers like automated payments and also text messages that get sent out the night before reminding them that the delivery is coming the next day and also text messages in real time when you deliver the products to those customers. What's additionally important here is that by having a delivery service, you're essentially removing the barrier of entry for your customers and making it easier for them to say yes. They don't have to pick up the greens, they don't have to go to a store or a farmer's market, and you make it a subscription so it just shows up for them each week without thought or effort. Top tip number three, start with just a few microgreens varieties before expanding to many varieties. When first learning to grow, there's a lot going on, so you really don't wanna over 
overwhelm yourself with trying to learn how to grow a bunch of different varieties. They all grow a little bit differently and some are more complicated than others. So start with a few basic easy ones first to learn the ropes. I typically recommend what I call the core four, which is broccoli, pea, radish, and sunflower. These are some of the most popular varieties and easiest to grow. So you can get the most value out of your initial seed purchase and the experience that you're gaining as you're learning to grow. You can always add more varieties later, but starting with just a few will keep it simple and keep your costs down. Make sure you are confident in growing the varieties before you start selling them to be sure that you can actually fulfill on those orders that you promised. And also don't let other outside requests dictate what you're growing in your farm. Consider these opinions, but don't let it dictate what you're doing you need to be able to make that final decision. When I first started my business, I was told to sell to chefs and I went into Huntington Village where I live and I met with a chef who told me, man, if you could just grow cilantro, like all the different places in this village will be all over you. They'll be buying all your cilantro, no problem. So cilantro is a little bit trickier to grow. I was a very beginner grower. It took me a few months to figure out how to grow this darn cilantro crop. And when I finally brought it back to that same chef, he didn't even want it, which was obviously super annoying. Now I wasn't really ready to be growing that crop yet. I wasn't actually confident in my grow. And this was an example of me letting others dictate what I'm doing in my farm. Overall, it was a great learning experience and I'm glad that it happened because it led me away from working with chefs and really focusing on selling for the health benefits and starting my home delivery subscription model which is still pretty much my model to this day where I sell direct to the consumer in their homes and help my community to really get healthy. So keep it to a few simple varieties so you don't get overextended financially or overwhelmed with all these different varieties while you're still doing a lot of learning. Speaking of learning the growing process, the fastest and most fun way to learn how to grow microgreens is definitely through my microgreens challenge. You can check that out at one tray away Dot com. And if you haven't joined already, let me know why down below in the comments. I started this challenge as an absolutely foolproof way to get anyone anywhere growing successful trays of microgreens from their home. So if you haven't started growing microgreens yet, tell me down below in the comments what is holding you back. I'd really like to know. All right, tip number four, create a unique value added best selling product. You can do this in many different ways, but the super simple method that I used was by creating a mixed box of microgreens called the Sunny Sampler. This is one of my best ideas early on when I was first starting and it really ended up helping my business to launch to the next level. By selling a mixed box, it makes it easier for your customers to make a decision on what they want to order because they probably don't know which varieties they like the best. So instead of trying to figure that out, a mixed box allows them to try a variety of different products that you offer, experiencing a variety of different flavors and a variety of different nutrients. It really is the perfect option for a new customer. Additionally, having multiple varieties all in one box with one sticker compared to those same varieties in five different containers with five different stickers. You're using less plastic and less stickers, therefore improving the sustainability of your company and drastically improving your profit margins. One box for your customer to get through during that week until their next box arrives next week is really simple for the customers to grasp mentally. And a mixed microgreens box is also a greater perceived value then the individual microgreens containers with individual varieties. Just think about it. When you go out to a place to eat like Applebee's, which I haven't done in years and you probably shouldn't do very often, why just get the chicken wings or the potato skins when you can get the appetizer sampler and have a little bit of everything? That's definitely the move. So higher profit margins, higher perceived value, lower barrier to entry to get that customer to say yes. The mixed container can be an absolute powerhouse for your microgreens business. And by the way, this is still my best selling item to this day. All right, top tip number five is start small and work your way up. The microgreens industry has piqued quite a lot of interest and really for good reason. Microgreens are fun, they are super healthy and nutritious, it's lucrative as a business model and also aligns with current market trends like I spoke about in my last video, and it's a fulfilling career that also improves your local community. I get it, microgreens are awesome. But the problem that I see is that the initial excitement ends up leading to bad decisions like buying a ton of equipment right out of the gate, especially before you have any customers and especially, especially before you have 
even started growing. I've literally seen people buy like 10 rack setups before they even have grown a crop. And this is really just very silly and often doesn't work out well for those people. I do advise buying some of the top quality equipment from the start, but you don't have to go so gung ho and get so much stuff all in the beginning. Start off small with a small amount of some of the basic equipment and supplies that you need and start growing a few trays to learn the ropes before you even consider doing this as a business, which, which can be quite stressful and is a much bigger undertaking than simply learning how to grow your own microgreens stress-free at home. My challenge is a great way to do this while also getting proper guidance along the way. And I'll speak on this in a minute, but please don't make the mistake of spending thousands of dollars before you have a plan that's already in action proving that it's working. You don't need to start with five racks and hundreds of trays. You can start with much less and work your way up as you grow using the profits from your business to pay for the next round of equipment and supplies. This is another reason why to buy the high quality equipment from the start so that way as you're buying more for your business into the future, as you scale, you're always buying the same stuff and it's all consistent in your farm. Not to mention the cheap stuff like crappy trays will end up breaking on you and costing you more money in the long run. And by the way, I include links to all the different stuff that I'm using right down below in this video's description. So go check out those links to make sure that you're buying the right stuff from the beginning. So when you're first starting out, grow for yourself and eat the product while you're learning how to grow. This way you're really mastering your growing process so you can be confident. And then you're gonna be learning how to eat the product, which is gonna help you to better inform your customers on how to eat the product, which will result in higher average orders and lower customer drop off. All right, so my five top tips for beginner microgreens growers are, one, start from home, two, have a delivery route right away. Three, grow just a few easy varieties to start. Four, create a unique value-added best-selling product like a mixed box. And five, start small and work your way up. And speaking of starting small, my microgreens challenge comes with just enough of the best equipment to get you started in a free grow kit, which I ship right to your house. That way you have the required materials to grow four trays of microgreens from home. It's a perfect way to finally get started growing microgreens if you haven't already, because you're gonna have me by your side guiding you day by day through your growing process. You're also gonna have access to me and all the other challengers through the chat room community, plus the free grow kit and so much more. I even have a guarantee that promises you're gonna be successful and will not fail. It's a foolproof way to get started growing microgreens as a beginner microgreens grower. So join the challenge today at onetrayaway.com because really you might just be one tray away. Check out these videos to see if becoming a microgreens grower is right for you, or watch the other video to learn if it's even still worth it to start a microgreens business in 2024. If you like this video, hit that like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and share this video with anybody you think may enjoy it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Peace.